The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. You might have a perfect bill of health from the doctor, but if you don't know how to praise the Lord, you are spiritually crippled. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. The morning's message is talking about more praise in your days. And of course, you can't have genuine praise apart from Thanksgiving. Biblically, they're really one and the same. I remember a story you may have heard before about a uh, circuit-riding preacher. Got old and it was time for him to retire. This is back in the days where these preachers would ride their horse from town to town. They'd do a little revival. They'd go on to the next town. And uh, he was a little older than his horse, so he thought he'd sell his horse. Well, he found a prospective buyer who came by and he said, I'd like to take the horse for a test drive. I said, fair enough. He said, but I need to let you know that, uh, you know, after all, I am a preacher and this horse is not like typical Western horses. If you want to go, you don't say giddy up, you say praise the Lord. If you want to stop, you don't say whoa, you say amen. He says, he's used to these biblical terms and that's all he's going to respond to. He said, fair enough, I, I think I can handle that. He said, I'd uh, like to try him out. He said, help yourself. And so he hops on the horse and uh, they lived there on the edge of town. He said, uh, giddy up. The horse didn't move. He said, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He said, praise the Lord. And so the horse took off and he started walking. He got out of town a little bit and he said, this seems like a good horse. He said, I wonder if I kick it up a notch. Praise the Lord. Horse started into a faster trot. Then he said, praise the Lord. And the horse went into a full gallop. And he thought, well, this is pretty good. The horse is pretty fast. But uh, all of a sudden he looked down the trail and he could see that the horse was galloping towards a cliff. He said, whoa, stop, halt. And the horse is charging up to the edge of this cliff. And he's trying to think, what was that word again? He said, amen. And the horse locked his legs and stopped and went screeching right up to the edge of the cliff and all the dust billowed bass tumbled off the cliff. And the man took a breath and he wiped his brow and he said, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to know when to say praise the Lord in a church and you know, when not to say it and what it means. Uh, we talk a lot about praising God and I found in the church that uh, real praise is something that is misunderstood both time and place. It's appropriate for us to talk about and study the subject of more praise in our days because it is a biblical theme. Over 290 times in the Bible you'll find the word praise. It's interesting, it goes all the way from Genesis to Revelation. The first mention of praise in the Bible you find in Genesis chapter 29 verse 35 when Leah gives birth to the boy Judah and she conceived again and bare a son and she said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. It's very interesting that the word Praise in Hebrew is Yuada, which means Judah, and it simply means praise. In Greek, the word is Ainos. Ainos is how you would say praise. But you know, I want to go back to that verse there in Genesis 35, or 29, verse 35. First time you find the word praise is with the son of the tribe, Judah through which the Messiah would come. He was the lion of the tribe of praise. And it's appropriate that every Christian be a member of the prize, of the tribe rather, of praise. Praise should be part of who we are. Maybe I should start with a definition. Praise comes from the Latin proteria or to prize. It's uh, drawn either from the word to prize or to price something. And so the word praise means expression of warm approbation, approval, commendation, or admiration. 
to extol, laud, worship, to exalt a deity, ruler, or hero, to praise. Now, not only are we talking about praising the Lord, but just if we were to talk in a more general sense of the, the word praise, everybody appreciates praise. I think everybody likes being told, you did a good job, we like who you are, to extol something good that you've done or a talent you might possess. And uh, John Ruskin once said, when we fail to praise somebody that deserves it, two sad things happen. First of all, we run a chance of driving him from the right road for lack of encouragement. And we deprive ourselves, secondly, of the highest privilege of being a rewarder of him who deserves reward. You are given the opportunity of dispensing reward when you offer praise. Someone else said, Roger Ashkin, there is no such whetstone to sharpen good wit and encourage everyone in life as praise. It's not just in the schoolroom, it's true everywhere. Praise will sharpen and improve any situation, relationship, any person, provided that it's truly deserved and sincerely given. You've probably also known people that are always thanking and praising people for everything, and, and uh, that's good, and we all want to be around people like that, but somebody once said, he who praises everyone really praises no one. If you have no rationing at all of your praise, then pretty soon people begin to wonder how sincere you are. And so the praise ought to be genuine, and it ought to be timely in the way that it's given. Everybody appreciates being appreciated. A pat on the back accomplishes a lot more than a slap in the face. Matter of fact, uh, there's probably a lot of you here who maybe have had fathers that uh, used to ration their praise a little too sparsely. Uh, my dad was that. Uh, he always wanted to get better performance, and so you'd often hear the criticism, and se seldom would you hear the praise. Um, I think it was the Duke of Wellington, the one who conquered Napoleon at Waterloo, who was a very brilliant general, but he was also a very exacting officer and, and uh, gave out very scant recommendation to people. Very rarely expressed appreciation or praise for a job well done. And he recognized that was a flaw because at the end of his life, someone asked him, if you could live your successful life over again, is there anything you'd do differently? He'd say, yes. I would praise more. Now that could probably be said not only of those in positions of leadership for people you're working with or parents, but I think that come eternity every Christian is going to say, you know, I wish during this life I had praised more. Because really, that's why we exist. We exist to give worship to God. You know, you, you really don't enjoy anything until you share it with somebody else. And if you see a beautiful sunset and you're by yourself, it, unless you can express praise to God for it or tell someone else that you elbow, isn't that beautiful? You really haven't fully delighted in it. Praise is the epitome of your existence. And so, uh, and the Bible's full of it. Matter of fact, I, I thought of this while I was just up there listening to the special music. You look in Luke 24. Typically, when you think about the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, they end with the Great Commission. And you think about the Gospel of John, it ends talking about uh, Jesus and his, his counsel to John and to Peter. But when you get to the end of Luke, it says in verse 50, he led them, this is Luke 24, verse 50. He led them out as far as Bethany. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. Now it came to pass as he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried into heaven. Notice. And they worshiped him, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. They went from worshiping God into the temple where they were occasionally or continually. Continually praising and blessing God. Christians, if known for anything, we ought to be known for people that praise God. Now there's a lot of misunderstanding about what it means to praise God. And some of this came from recent generations where 
some of the televangelists would have programs. I had one program called Praise the Lord. And uh, you might hear someone say the words Praise the Lord 90 times during one show. And sometimes several times in sequence. It was just like vain repetition. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, that's all praise the Lord. And that would mean everybody starts raising their hands and waving them and saying praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's not really what praise is. Because praise is where you extol, you identify, you specify someone's goodness, you specifically thank them for something specific. If you walk up to a stranger on the street and say thank you, thank you, thank you, they think you're mad. For what they'd say. You'd have to give them a specific. And it's okay to give each other encouragement. Everybody needs it. Does God ever encourage and praise people? Is praise only for God? No. You can read in the Bible about Cornelius. Does God praise people? Yes. Acts 10 verse 4, an angel comes to this Roman centurion saying, God has looked at your generosity. He's looked at your, your alms and your kindness. He says, your prayers and your alms are come up as a memorial before God. God had been taking note of that and God sent an angel to tell him that he noticed. In the book of Job, does the Lord talk about his servant Job and speak of him in a praiseworthy name or way? He even said to the, uh, the devil, have you considered my servant Job that there's none like him in the earth? It's like he's bragging on him. A blameless and an upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Notice he gives the specifics. By the way, Jesus said that if we speak up for him, we're not ashamed of him, God will not be ashamed of us, and he will confess our name before the Father and the angels. This is exactly what happened where here God was confessing the name of Job before the throne of God and before the angels. Wouldn't that be something if God praise us? Will Jesus say to those that are saved, Matthew 25, 21, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. God is praising those who have done a good job. Well done. How many of you wish that maybe your parents had said that more to you? Well done. Good job. To be encouraged, to be complimented. Our Heavenly Father does. You know, it really gets me. He even does it among those who weren't perfect. Was Abraham perfect? Did Abraham kind of uh, tell a half-truth when he said Sarah was his sister? But when God then refers back to Abraham, because Abraham accepted the blood and sacrifice of the Lord, God looked upon him and he said, Abraham is the one who kept my commandments and he's done that which was right in my eyes. What about David? Did David live a life that was worthy of praise? Well, for the most part, he made some big blunders. And yet listen to what God says about David. 1 Kings 14, 8. And yet you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, who followed me with all of my heart, to do only that which was right in my eyes. Well, does God have a bad memory? Or had God forgiven him? Looked upon David and he praised him. He also looked at the big picture. Now, so many people, when they look back on a life where there's been a major mistake, that's all they think about. And they won't think about the good things they may have done. Uh, sometimes history is unfair in the way that it judges, but God praises people. John 1 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He didn't say he was sinless, but this was a very honest man, Nathanael. And Jesus brought that out and he was encouraged by it. Now, of course, in the world, we sometimes are more preoccupied with the praise of men than the praise of God. If you're going to seek praise and, and don't live to try and get praised, by men. Be more concerned with the praise that comes from God. John 12, 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. I want God to be pleased with me. Now I think everyone knows that uh, our primary purpose in life is we live to worship and praise God. The Bible begins with worship, it ends with worship, the final battle is over worship, and so praise is central to that. We need to understand it. We need to spend more time praising God. We worship God for who He is. We praise Him more specifically for what He's done. We thank Him for what He's done. But so often, and it happens in relationships, it happens in marriages, in families, with workers, when someone's doing a good job, we sort of take it for granted and we forget to express appreciation.
sometimes you think, well, you know, I've done it before, and we forget how long it's been. It's something you need to do frequently, and you should never really be done expressing appreciation. Like the husband, his wife said, you never tell me you love me anymore. And he said, well, I told you when I married you. If I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> and let's face it, we're all that way sometimes. Erwin Lutzer said, praise is an act of worship. And if we haven't learned to worship, it doesn't really matter how well we do anything else. There will be people in heaven that maybe went to church on the wrong day, but there won't be anyone in heaven that doesn't praise God. So if we don't get that right, we got it all wrong. Heaven is filled with beings that praise God. God is praised in heaven. Revelation 7 verse 10, and there's several verses I could read. These angels around the throne of God, they cry with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts. And they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. They're thanking and praising Him in heaven. If we hope to be there, we need to probably start learning to do that more here. Isaiah 6, verse 3, he had this vision of heaven, and these angels by the throne of God are saying continually, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. These are covering angels by the throne of God. What was their job? They were to praise God. Have you ever considered that the transition point for Lucifer when he stopped being a cherub and started being the devil and Satan and a rebel? When he ceased to praise God, when he began to frown in the presence of God and want the praise for himself instead of being willing to offer it freely to God, he then ceased being that angel and he transitioned into being a rebel. And what do you think dis distinguished the fallen angels from the good angels? I can guarantee you the fallen angels stopped praising God. And I think that uh, some people fall, they backslide in their experience when we forget to thank and to praise God for all the blessings that He's again given us. All of creation praises God, not only in heaven, but even here on earth. Luke 19, verse 40, when Jesus was coming down the mountain and all the children were crying out, saying, uh, praise the Lord and Hosanna, Hosanna. And they told Jesus to tell them to be quiet. And he said, if these should be quiet, even the stones would immediately cry out. Very nature would praise God. Psalm 148, verse 5. You find a lot of praise in the Psalms. It says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the heights. Praise Him, all you angels. Praise Him, all this host. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens and you waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commands and they were created. You go to Psalm 96, verse 11 and 12. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. And all the trees of the wood rejoice. And you've heard that song, all the trees of the field will clap their hands. It talks about nature praising the Lord. Some of you have heard a dog barking at night. You, you thought it was plain old noise. Maybe he's praising God. <laughs> Just sounds like noise. And let's face it, when Christians are out in the world praising the Lord, sometimes the world thinks we're just making noise. But God knows that what it's coming from. Psalm 150, this is the last psalm. Matter of fact, you could read that whole, matter of fact, I'm going to do that real quick. If you go to Psalm 50, Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6, Praise the Lord. This is the last of the Psalms. I think there's a reason that you find this word so frequently here. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, with the psalter tree and harp. Praise Him with timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. 
Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him on the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath, that's not just talking about people, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And then it ends, the last words in the book of Psalms are, Praise ye the Lord. We should be uh, comfortable praising him in public. And you know, I think the devil has tried to intimidate God's people with the scorn of the world if you praise the Lord in public. Yes, there'll be some people that look at you narrowly or, or uh, think that you're making a spectacle. I'm not suggesting you make a spectacle. But don't be ashamed that you believe in God. Are the angels ever ashamed to give glory to God? Do they ever hide it? When you think about how many of the creatures in the universe believe in God, is it the majority or the minority? The vast majority. It's only an, a minuscule fragment of His creation on this planet that don't believe that He exists, that don't praise Him. Are you going to cow down to that small group that's going to lose in the end? and hide your praise because you're afraid of what they think of you? They're on the losing team. Or are you going to remember that angels are watching and don't be ashamed to give God the glory? Isaiah 24, verse 4, Praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His deeds among the people, publicly, in church and out of church. Matter of fact, you find an interesting story. If you look in your Bibles, Acts chapter 3, this is a great story. Again, written by Luke. Peter comes to the uh, beautiful gate and there's this man who has never walked in his life. He, he was lame from birth. His legs were gnarled and crippled so he couldn't walk and someone was kind enough they'd carry him each day and they'd set him down at the doors of the temple and he'd heard about Jesus but he had missed getting healed by Christ. He just was always in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so he had never been healed during all the ministry of Jesus. And he stood at the gate there and begged. He could not go in because he was lame. Do you realize that the cripples were not allowed in according to the Levitical law? And Peter and John come and they see this man and they could tell that he had faith, that he wanted to be healed by Jesus, but now Jesus had been crucified and he ascended to heaven. He's gone. And that's when Peter reached out. He took his hand. He said, Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. This is a great story. Bible says he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. I'm in Acts 3 verse 7. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, he stood and he walked and he entered with them into the temple. Notice here, walking and leaping. He'd never walked before but he's leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now you know, somebody said one time, a body is not really crippled till it ceases to praise. And if a person does not praise, then they are truly crippled. You might have a perfect bill of health from the doctor, but if you don't know how to praise the Lord, you are spiritually crippled. You don't learn praise in a day, quoting Erwin Lutzer here, especially since you may have been complaining for years. New habits take time to develop. You can begin today and practice tomorrow and the next day until it becomes part of you. God gives us blessings so we can give glory to Him. Most of the verses written about praise in God's Word were penned by men and women who faced crushing heartache, injustice, treachery, slander, and scores of other intolerable situations. And in the midst of all that, they learned to praise God. They disciplined themselves to praise God during their blessings so they could keep praising God through their trials. By the way, that was written by Johnny, Johnny Erickson Tata herself. Praise and worship is the most profound way of expressing our love to the Father. God loves us. He loves to be sincerely praised and worshiped. He doesn't want us to praise Him just through vain repetition. It needs to be from the heart. I wonder how many battles we've lost because we try and find some earthly means and may not know what to do. Just praise God. Has God given you something to praise Him for? Yes. Has He given you something to be thankful for? Yes. Thank Him. You know, the more you thank Him, you pave the way for future benefits. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with this week's special offer.
Now, is it wrong to want to see miracles? Have you ever thought, Lord, people in the Bible saw angels. People in the Bible saw miracles. I, I want more faith. If I could see more miracles, I'd have more faith. You know what one of the great signs is for us that God is real? It's the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts. Experience Bible prophecy like never before with Prophecy Foundations, the new multimedia platform with 27 unique Bible studies for adults and kids, over 32 hours of Bible teaching video sermons by Pastor Doug Batchelor, the electronic Amazing Health magazine filled with life-transforming health tips, over 160 audio questions and answers, and over 57 books all on one DVD. Go to store.amazingfacts.org. During a time of great spiritual darkness. When brave souls risked everything. The light of God's word was given back to all mankind. Conflict. This Cosmic Conflict Project is going to change lives and liberate people with the truth all around the world. Will you please prayerfully consider joining with us in this epic project to change lives with the truth? Praise to God is often misunderstood. Does it have to do with how loud you sing? Is it as simple as whether there's excitement in your worship service or if it's more subdued? The principle of praise and thanksgiving to God should happen on a continuous basis. Praise to God has nothing to do with how much you have or don't have. Our praise and thanks to God must remain consistent simply for God being God. Imagine what your life would be like if you kept a positive spirit throughout the day with thanksgiving in mind. Why do we worry about the things we cannot control instead of focusing on the things that have changed and the blessings we have received in spite of? We would like to offer you a wonderful pocketbook entitled From Stress to Joy. This book will give you some practical guidelines on how to keep your mind and motives pure. Please visit our website, amazingfacts.org, or call the toll-free number on your screen and ask for offer number 705. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. This is your last chance to take advantage of this week's special free offer. There is no cost or obligation. Just call the toll-free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request. The preceding was a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. The morning's message is talking about more praise in your days. And of course, you can't have genuine praise apart from Thanksgiving. Biblically, they're really one and the same. I remember a story you may have heard before about a uh, circuit-riding preacher got old and it was time for him to retire. This is back in the days where these preachers would ride their horse from town to town. They'd do a little revival. They'd the following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. You might have a perfect bill of health from the doctor, but if you don't know how to praise the Lord, you are spiritually crippled. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy. This is pretty good. The horse is pretty fast. But uh, all of a sudden, he looked down the trail, and he could see that the horse was galloping towards a cliff. He said, whoa, stop, halt. And the horse is charging up to the edge of this cliff. And he's trying to think, what was that word again? He said, amen. And the horse 
locked his legs and stopped and went screeching right up to the edge of the cliff and all the dust billowed bass and tumbled off the cliff and the man took a breath and he wiped his brow and he said, praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I think I can handle that. He said, uh, I'd like to try him out. He said, help yourself. And so he hops on the horse and uh, they lived there on the edge of town. He said, uh, giddy up. The horse didn't move. He said, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He said, praise the Lord. And the, so the horse took off and he started walking. He got out of town a little bit and he says, hey, seems like a good horse. He said, I wonder if I kick it up a notch. Praise the Lord. Horse started into a faster trot. Then he said, praise the Lord. And the horse went into a full gallop. And he thought, well, I'd go on to the next town. And uh, he was a little older than his horse, so he thought he'd sell his horse. Well, he found a prospective buyer who came by and he said, I'd like to take the horse for a test drive. He said, fair enough. He said, but I need to let you know that, uh, you know, after all, I am a preacher and this horse is not like typical Western horses. If you want to go, you don't say giddy up, you say praise the Lord. If you want to stop, you don't say whoa, you say amen. He says he's used to these biblical terms and that's all he's going to respond to. He said, fair enough.